Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. On this channel, I mostly post studio vlogs, market prep vlogs, all behind the scenes of my business. But today I wanted to do a beginner's guide to punch needling. Some of my main products that I sell are punch needled. So I have punch needle car coasters, which are behind me. I do punch needle large coasters, punch needle tote bags, punch needle phone grips. And I have a lot of people asking me about the materials I use and the process how to punch needle. So I'm going to be revealing all of my secrets, all of that information in today's video. So let's just get right into this. I want to start by going over different combinations of fabric, yarn, and punch needle that have worked for me. And then I'm also going to show pictures of what my coasters looked like when I was using each of those combinations. In my opinion, the hardest part about punch needling is finding the right combination that gives you the look that you want. So it's important that the fabric, yarn, and punch needle size all agree. And through experimenting, this is what I found has worked. And I also just want to say that all of the materials are going to be linked in the description below and any other information that I think is helpful will be down there. Okay, so the first combination, this is what I started off with when I started punch needling. I used Monk's cloth, which is a thicker cloth than what I use now. Super easy to find. You can find it at your local craft store. Amazon sells it. Again, it's gonna be linked. That was the fabric I was using. And then I was using size four yarn, which is also very accessible in the US. I got it at Michael's. And then the punch needle I was using is the Lavore or Lasses. L-A-C-I-S, sorry, I'm looking at my computer, punch needle. And I also found that one on Amazon. So yeah, that was the first combination I used. It gave more of a thicker, fluffier look to my coasters. I wanted to fine tune the details on my coasters though. So I switched over to this next combination where I was using poly linen for my fabric, size four yarn still, and then the same punch needle. And that really helped fine tune the details but the resistance with the needle and yarn and then the fabric was too much. It was making my finger really hurt. I was getting trigger finger. So then I kept looking and I landed on the combination that I currently use. It's my favorite, that's why I still use it. I use muslin fabric, size two yarn, so it's a smaller yarn with only two strands together, and the Mina Karen punch needle. And now I'm gonna get into actually showing how to punch needle and the supplies you're gonna need other than what I just listed. I obviously put pictures on the screen, but this is what my current car coasters look like. This is obviously a yin and yang. That's a more simple design. And I also have more detailed designs where the line work matters a little more, such as my checkered. But without further ado, let's learn how to punch needle. So I first want to go over the supplies you're going to need, and I apologize for the shadows. My lighting is not the best, but you're going to need some yarn. So again, this is size two yarn. Then you're also going to want an embroidery frame. It doesn't have to be this big. I started off using small hoops from a local craft store, but I got this one on Etsy. I'll link it below. It has a bunch of little spikes or like little needles on the edges. And then I also bought the cover so that I don't poke myself. It's very sharp. If you get this frame, I definitely recommend getting a cover. Then you're gonna need your fabric. Again, this is muslin and I cut it so that it's a little bigger than the frame because we're gonna be stretching this over the frame. Then you're gonna need a Sharpie to trace your designs, your punch needle, a punch needle threader, and then this is a stencil that I use because I sell these coasters. I want them all to look the same. So I have stencils that I've made and then you're gonna need a pair of scissors to cut the yarn as we go. Depending on the project you're making, you might need more supplies. I also use hot glue, I use felt, but this is everything you'll need to punch needle something before you finish it. In other words, before you finish the backing. So I'm gonna take the fabric off of the frame. And the first thing we're going to do is stretch the fabric. I debated having this pre-stretched for the video, but I thought it would be helpful to show how to stretch fabric. It's not the quickest thing, but basically you're just going to lay the fabric over your frame. And if you're using a hoop, obviously it's different on how you're going to stretch it. And you're going to start on one side, and it's really sharp, so you want to be careful here. But I just press it until the needles start to poke through. And the most important thing when you're stretching fabric is you want to get it as taut as you can. But after I do one side, I'm just going to hold that side and pull and do the same thing on the other side. 
So I'm pulling fabric, pushing it down, and then pushing it so that the needles come through. And different fabric will be easier or harder to poke through the needles. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing to the other two sides. So I'm just gonna hold the opposite side, pull, and pinch it down. And you want it to be tight like a canvas drum. So there really shouldn't be much give to the fabric when you hit it. And unfortunately, this will loosen a little bit as you punch needle. You can tighten it as you go, but you want to be careful not to distort the design. So then I'm just going to put this right back over the edges. And then the next thing you're going to do is trace your design. And I'm able to hold my stencil right under the fabric and see it enough to trace it. If you have a thicker fabric, you might need to put a light under, so you'd put a light on this side in order to see the design better. I'm going to trace this off camera and then we can start punch needling. Okay, so my design is traced. I'm going to be making a lime, and I'm going to start by taking my punch needle. There is a hole on the back of it. That's where you want to start by putting the threader in that hole and then straight down the needle all the way down. So it's not coming out this way, it's going down. Put it all the way down. Sometimes, usually, I take this off so that I can go through. And now the threader is in the needle. You're going to open it up, take the first color you're using. So I'm going to be using white to start. This project has two colors. You can do as many colors as you want. You're going to put the tail of the yarn into the threader, and then you're just going to pull the threader through, and the yarn will come through the eye of the needle like that. And then I'm just going to shorten the tail to about a quarter of an inch. And now we're ready to go. So before I start, I want to mention a couple of important things. The first thing is if you do not have the right combination of punch needle yarn and fabric, you're going to run into the fabric getting holes in it. And you'll also run into the issue of the yarn not staying in the fabric. So that's why it's important to have the right combination. Another thing, the length of the needle matters. It's going to change how long the loops are on the other side. You work from the back when you're punch needling. So this is the back of my design. There's two different looks to punch needling. There's a fluffy look, which is the side that has the loops. And then there's more of a flat look. I'm using the flat look as the back of my design. The fluffier look is the front of it. If you want to use that flat look as your front, you're just going to have to pull the yarn through the other side when you start punch needling. But we're just going to work as the fluffy side being the front side of the project. Another important thing is you always want the eye of the needle facing away from the way that you're punching. So if I'm trying to punch straight up this way, the eye of the needle is facing the way that I came from. So if I'm turning a corner, I'm going to turn my needle so that the eye is facing away from where I'm going. If I'm turning, turning my needle and so on. Also, you always want to have slack in the yarn. If the yarn is taut and tight, then it's going to pull out of the fabric. So you always need to have loose yarn when you're punch needling. So you're going to start by punch needling over your design. The way that I've made my car coasters, I need to actually start on the outside in order for it to be the right size. So I'll be starting on the outside of my design. Okay, so the frame is actually now propped up on the table and resting on my lap. This is how I punch needle. I have it resting on my lap. So I have a little bit of a tail here. You can start either way. You can go this way. You can go that way. The way I punch needle is I do the whole outside of a design and then I keep going inward. You could go up and down, whichever you find is easiest and fastest for you. So you're literally just going to punch right through the fabric. You're going to come out and then punch right next to that first punch. You want to make sure that you're punching all the way down to the tip of the punch needle so that the whole needle is going all the way through. This will ensure that your punches and loops are the same size. The way the punch needling works, I keep mentioning loops, is it creates a little loop on the opposite side. So not this side, but the other side. So you're going to come up again, punch down, and turn your needle accordingly to the angle that you're punch needling. So as I round the circle, I'm turning my needle just a little bit so that the eye is staying 
pointed in the direction of where I'm coming from. And so I'm literally just punching up and down, keeping the eye pointing from where I'm coming and trying to keep the punches as close together as I can. You don't wanna punch through another punch though, so be careful about that. As I come up, I don't actually lift my needle all the way out. Let me show you what will happen. If I was to lift my needle up too high, it's gonna pull that last loop up. So I keep it really close to the fabric. And again, my yarn has slack so that the loops aren't getting pulled out. If you're having any issues, feel free to comment and I will try to help as many people as I can. Hopefully I have solutions. I'm not an expert, but I've done a lot of trial and error. And as you can see, my punch needle's angled a little bit. It doesn't have to be straight. It doesn't matter too much, I found. Okay, so right here, I just finished a full circle. And for this design, I do two circles. So I'm just gonna literally, I just finished a punch here. I'm just moving my punch needle over a little bit to do another round. And now I'm punching next to the row that I just did. So you want the punches as close together, front and back and side to side as you can without punching over another punch. So I'm just gonna continue to go all around. I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'm gonna show you how to change the color. Okay, so I just finished with the white for now. I'm going to take my needle out and then this next step is very important. I'm gonna put my finger on the thread that's coming out of the needle and then pull the needle back. That way, that final loop stays in and doesn't come out when I pull. Then you're gonna just trim the yarn. You're gonna take the yarn out of the needle and then you can switch colors. So super easy to switch colors. I also wanna show you if you make a mistake what to do. So I'm threading my needle again. Just like we did before, I'm gonna put the tail of my next color yarn into the threader and pull it through. Okay, before we start the green, I wanna show you what it's looking like. So we have this fluffy white that we just did, which are the little individual loops, and now I'm gonna do the green. After I do the green, I'm gonna show you again what this looks like. All of these little triangles are gonna look super mushed together. Once I add the white in between each one, these triangles will be more detailed. So with punch needling, you definitely have to trust the process because the design isn't always looking how you want it to until it's done or almost done, if that makes sense. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the green and now we're working with smaller details, but don't get stressed. It's the same exact process. You can start wherever you want. I'm gonna start up here. I'm gonna punch and as I come to a corner, I'm rotating my punch needle. I'm at a point, I'm gonna do a sharp rotation. So I just twisted my punch needle. Now I'm going up. Sharp turn. Okay, so I could go up and down to finish this, but I personally just keep doing the outline until it's full. So I'm doing the same pattern. Feel free to slow this video down if you want to see a slower version of what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm not changing colors, but I'm done with this little triangle. So I'm going to put my finger down on the yarn, pull back, trim it, and then we can move on to the next, the next, the next, and do all these little triangles. Let me show you, if you make a mistake, how to fix it. So let's say I'm punch needling, and I don't know, I went too close to the green right here. So I wanna undo that and redo it. You literally just pull out the yarn. So if you can see, there's a couple of holes in the fabric from where the yarn just was. I'm just gonna take my punch needle, you can also do this with your finger, and just scrape over the holes to get the fabric back to how it was, get the little threads back together. And then we also have some loose yarn right here from pulling out that yarn, so let me show you how to fix that. So I'm just gonna pull from the back of my punch needle, I'm gonna pull the yarn just a little bit, 
not too much because I don't want to pull out any yarn. And let me show you a little close up of what it looks like now. So now my yarn is back to a good length to continue to punch needle. You want to be careful though because the more that you punch needle over the same spot, the weaker the threads of the fabric will get and it might no longer hold your yarn. So just be aware of that. Okay, I'm going to put my finger down, pull the yarn, and trim. I'm going to do the other triangles off camera and then I will show you what it looks like. Okay, as I was just punch needling, I realized there's something else I want to explain. So I'm pretty much done with this triangle right here, but there's a little white section that I want to add another punch to, but it's not close enough that I can take my needle out, go over there, and punch it because then the last loop I just did will come out. So again, if something like this happens, you're just going to put your finger on the fabric, pull it a little bit, and then you can reach the area that you want to punch. You can punch it and then I'm done with this section. So I'm gonna put my finger on there again. But I hope that makes sense. That's just how to get to an area that's not right next to where you just punched. Okay, so I just finished the green triangles, but I'm laughing at myself because I made a pretty big mistake. But it's fine because for the sake of the video, I can show you how to undo a bigger mistake. So I didn't just mess up a couple of punches. This whole outside was supposed to be green, not white. So I'm gonna take the tail of the white and I'm gonna pull it and undo all of that. So now you can really see there's holes everywhere. I'm gonna scrape it with my punch needle and then I'm gonna redo this green. So if you can see, the fabric's not holding. That's probably because I didn't scrape this enough. I mean the yarn wasn't holding. Fingers crossed, sometimes it just won't work. <laughs> there we go. So I'm gonna do this all the way around and then show you what the back is looking like. Okay, so this is what the design is looking like. As you can see, this looks all mushed together. Once I add the white, it will make that look a lot better. Also, the outside looks a little funky. Some of the yarn loops are bigger than others. That's because I compromised the fabric by making that mistake. And so some of the loops aren't holding. What I'm gonna do to fix that is I'm gonna keep this facing me so that I can see it better. So I'm just gonna work from the back without looking at it. And I'm gonna go right over the parts that need some help. So right here, there's a couple threads that are just super small. So I'm literally gonna go over and just try to make that look a little fuller. I'm gonna do that wherever else it needs some help. Okay, so now the last color I need is white. I rethreaded my needle and I'm gonna start over here. All of the space that is not punched yet is just gonna be white. So I'm gonna start punching. Same thing, I'm staying close to the green thread. I'm gonna go all the way around. For this design, I go around two to three times, so I'm gonna do that off camera, and then I'll show you how to go between these triangles really nicely. Okay, so I just finished my last punch for the circle part, and I wanna go in between the triangles. You can do this without looking at the other side and just punch like so. But what could happen, and this actually happens a lot, for me, if I'm not looking at this side, is you can accidentally punch through one of the green threads and it just doesn't look so nice. So I'm gonna actually hold it this way so that I can see exactly where I'm punching. I'm doing the same thing that I would be doing if I was working on the other side, but this way I can see what I'm doing. It's a little trickier. So you can see that triangle coming together as I do these white threads. I'm gonna do the rest off camera and then show you the final product. Okay, so I've just finished the coaster, and this is what the front looks like. And the outside isn't perfect, but that's because of that mistake I made. It was a little more difficult to get this nice and symmetrical. But let me show you what you need to do before you finish any project. So you're going to have to trim all of these little tails. So this is pretty self-explanatory, but you want to make sure you've completely cut through the yarn before we pull the scissors away. If you haven't, you might grab the yarn and then pull the loop out. They're really easy to pull out, so you wanna be careful. Also, like I was saying, each project you'll finish differently, but for me, 
I cut these out. I cut around each coaster and then I glue the fabric to the back and then I put felt on. I glue felt on. So this is pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. I could cut this one too if I'm worried that I might pull it. Um, but yeah, let me show you what a finished coaster looks like. So here is an example of a finished lime car coaster. So I did this one obviously earlier off camera. The backs I have felt on and then I also put my branding tag. I also have a car cup holder here just to show you what they look like um, in the cup holder. So yeah, I sell these on my Etsy and my Etsy will be linked down below. I have a bunch of different designs to choose from. Let me quickly show you some of my options. I know this video is to help you learn how to punch needle, but I also want to just share the work that I do. So I have all of these different designs. I also sell them in large coasters. I don't have quite as many designs in the large coasters, but hopefully one day. But I really hope this video helped you. I love punch needling, it's super therapeutic, but it can definitely be frustrating at the beginning when you're trying to figure out the right method and what to use. And as you punch needle, you'll definitely develop your own techniques and ways that you like to punch needle. But if you have any questions or if you run into any issues, please comment below. And like I said, I'll try to help out if I can, if I have what I think could be a solution to your problem. And I hope I didn't miss anything. I tried to cover as much as I could. Punch needling is pretty easy once you have the right materials. So again, materials are linked below. And be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more about me and my business and behind the scenes preparing for markets and just day-to-day -day running my business. So yeah, I hope to see you in my next video. Even